Today I'm bringing you an Indonesian boot brand that actually has been around for many years now, since 2010. This is the Santalum Service Boot. So let's talk about the details of this boot first, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about Santalum and then what I think about the quality and craftsmanship that's gone into this about. pair. I chose a cap toe, as you can see here, um, brogued cap toe with a Veltuin construction using a seven inch height with five eyelets and three speed hooks, all in brass color. Solid back heel cap, slight contrast off-white stitching was also used for this boot. And I put the whole boot assembled on a Ridgeway sole and essentially used a double leather sole. Santalum has, as I mentioned, been around since 2010, so as of this video recording, 11 years now. It was founded by Laurentius Mahandrino, um, along with a friend of his, and started gaining a reputation, essentially, for offering a much more affordable alternative to the Vibrix service boot. They typically have sourced Horween leathers for their higher-end boots, but they also use what they describe as comparable Indonesian leathers. And they see they have a small team. They essentially only uh, hand put together essentially between three and four boots per week. Um, it usually takes about two to three months to uh, assemble a boot. I used all of my communication through Instagram. Ultimately, they send you an invoice once you decide upon what makeup you wish for, and they, you pay half up front and then half on completion of the boots, and then it's shipped to you via, at least in the U.S., it was shipped to me via DHL. See, they were great with me in terms of communication and helping me decide on what exact makeup I wanted to do. I felt like the communication was great, it was easy, and the invoice came and everything was done through PayPal, and I felt comfortable with that process. Mm -hmm. They say that their small production team essentially does everything more or less by hand, hand stitching of the soles, even some of their Goodyear uh, machined work is essentially done primarily by hand because they don't have a complex set of machinery to kind of accomplish that. Um, and they say that most of their business is in the U.S. market, so they're a well-known company amongst boot aficionados, but there are not that many reviews out there on Santalum boots. From a so positive I'm... standpoint, this is actually quite a beautifully um, lasted nice. boot. It looks... I think that their price um, in the neighborhood of $350, $350, depending on how you want to go, and certainly more if you want to spend on higher quality leathers, is competitive. That was asking for my information and sizing, and then essentially providing me an idea of what last and what um, what size would fit me well. So I'm a Brannock 10 that translated into a 43 in terms of their sizing, which is pretty comparable to the EU sizing methodology. Solid lacing um, seems to have held up to a few wears. Um, the fit feels good. The build feels pretty rugged. Um, and so all in all, I feel like this is a boot I primarily bought to do um, hiking. I do a fair bit of photography and I wanted a pair of boots that I could essentially beat up without worrying about the aesthetics. And so this is an Indonesian rough out leather. I like the contrast stitching and the style. So macroscopically, this boot looks pretty nice. But now I wanted to talk about the negatives of this boot and ultimately my conclusions. And so first off, Getting a sense for this rough out leather, it is rather rough as far as rough out is concerned. You know, it doesn't typically, it doesn't have as much uh, um, smoothness or sort of um, sort of the same feel as sort of higher quality leathers. You know, you're using a boot that's meant really not to be showcased as a as a art piece, but more as a workhorse. So that's one thing that I felt like was negative. There's a fair bit of unevenness to the welting here. This is a Veltschow, and you can see at the toe that it almost looks like there was a few errors in spacing and stitching that were done and that could have been improved upon. It's not terrible work by any means, but I don't know. I mean, for a comparable pricing, you can get, you can get some pretty good deals and much better construction. But their welt is a 360 degree Veltschuen. So it has a double row for about half of uh, the circumference of the shoe, but the stitching continues 
all the way around the back heel, as you can see. Um, if you look at the bottom, you can see some of the inconsistencies here in the stitching. Um, there's some unevenness. Certainly gives you the impression that this was mainly done by hand, but the craftsmanship leaves something to be desired. You can see some spacing between stitches is rather irregular. Um, you know, not terrible, but certainly not up to snuff for what I'm expected. Oh, and in the cap toe, some of the stitch actually seems to hide in the nap of the rough out, um, as well as uh, some of the broguing, which is really hard to see. And that you can see the edge there is a little bit sloppy right in here. A little bit sloppily done, nothing crazy, but still a little bit sloppily done. The stitching on the upper is has a fairly low stitch density. This is not necessarily the tightest um, stitch density I've ever seen and probably is actually the lowest stitch density of any shoe that I own from the Indonesian boot makers. Most people don't have the microscopic eye that boot collectors have and uh, shoe aficionados have for these details. They just look at the boot and say, well, that looks like a cool boot. So I think you're getting a cool looking boot. But for those of you who are interested in a little bit more of enjoying the nuanced details, some of the skilled construction that are done by companies such as Renov Goods, Underhood, Prof Barnett's, who does their incredible heels, uh, tight stitch density, Veltschuen or Goodyear two row stitching, some of the very subtle details. Uh, this is not going to be the boot necessarily for you. And um, would I recommend it for anybody else? I don't think so. Would I choose to buy it again? Probably not. And uh, would I still find I have a place for it in my wardrobe? Yeah, for now I do. Um, I imagine that eventually, like all of us boot aficionados do, we pass along the shoes to the next person. So hope you're doing well. One more view of these Santalum service boots out of Bandung, Indonesia. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well and have a good day.